Hello and welcome to Julie Hall Designs. Today I'm going to share with you how I make this brilliant coffee cup carrier. It is large enough to hold two, I'm sorry I'm just going to do this here, to hold two McDonald's size large coffees or we also have it in the single size for when you just want to carry your own and not get hot. The carrier fits in an 8 by 12 hoop or larger and what we're going to do is show you exactly how I go about creating this fantastic project. Okay, let's get started. So, to get started, there's a couple of things that we need to consider. I am stitching today with dark colour fabrics. And therefore, because I'm using a black thread in my needle I also want to use a black thread in my bobbin and I've wound a bobbin with the same thread as my needle I can now pop that bobbin in I have my design on the screen and you can see I've got a layer of tearaway in the hoop securely. All I am going to do is come through and take my three layers. So I have my backing fabric, which is just a PUL fabric. And I have my... Um, wadding or lining which I am using the um, stitch and shape product it's nice and thick and holds itself together nicely what I want to do is center those over the hoop and then I'm going to lay my decorative fabric on top of that and I'm going to stitch colorway one, which is going to show where I am going to trim the design. Okay, so while our stitching is going on here, what I just want to talk to you about is the fact that I've used PUL fabric at the backing. I've done that so that if any of my drinks splash on the inside, my... Um, it makes it simple for me to just wipe that clean. I was lucky enough to have some PUL fabric around that I had not used. If you don't have that, don't bother using it. Just use a regular fabric. Right, so I've removed the hoop from the machine. And as you can see, you've got the stitching lines here showing you exactly where we need to trim away. I'm going to start by trimming away from the inside and I'm going to take my curved tip scissors the sharpest pair that I have and come through and cut through the fabric now with these inner designs it doesn't matter if I trim away the stabilizer now it's awkward to try and watch this and it's just as awkward to try and do it so let me just move the hoop around here and at the moment, all I'm doing is cutting through the main fabric and the stitch and shape. The PUL, because it is a plasticky fabric, is a little bit more difficult to cut through. And that cutting has not um, come through. So it's going to be a two-step process. So let me just come through and trim away this inner circle and then what I'm going to do 
is come through and I need to get rid of the PUL fabric. So what I'm going to do is use my Stanley knife and come and trim and put a cut in that. Now it is going to cut through that stabilizer and that is okay because we're going to lay another piece of stabilizer under there later. That's just enough for me to get in and then I can use my larger scissors and trim around and get rid of that PUL fabric. It is really important that we do not um, lift the project up and um, be poking our scissors through. We need the project to remain absolutely flat within the hoop. And then you'll do the same things for each of the um, handles. What I want to show you now is how we are going to trim around the outside because when you're trimming the outside of the project you cannot come through and cut the stabilizer. So initially I'm just going to trim away the main fabric and I'm just going to do this really really quickly. Then I'm going to get rid of the stitch and shape and by doing it this way what we're ensuring is that we are going through all three layers but it also ensures that you get them really even and close. As stupid as it sounds because you're not doing them all together you actually get a nicer effect. And then finally using curved tip scissors because you don't want to be digging into the stabilizer you can come through and cut that excess PUL fabric. Okay now this is going to look really really boring just watching me trim away all of the excess pieces of this. So what I'm going to do is wave my magic wand and complete the project. And as you can see that has finished the cutting out of all of the design and I'm ready to put the hoop back onto the machine so that I can um, stitch colorway two which will do all of the satin stitch and complete our project. Let's move back to the machine. As you can see we are now back at the machine and I have started stitching. What I do want to point out to you is when I placed the hoop back on the machine here I actually laid an extra piece of tear away underneath the machine underneath the hoop so I floated that extra stabilizer and what that fundamentally does is allows us to do a lot of satin stitches in a very small space without the object coming out of the hoop and that takes care of any little bits of stabilizer we might have cut away in the trimming process. Now you can see here that as the stitches are being formed you've got two layers of, um, of underlay and a rather wide satin stitch. This is so that the satin stitch is going to stay exactly where we want it to and um, really protect your hands while you are carrying these coffees. Um, now my stitching I have super speeded everything that I've got on here now um, and this design will take about um, 40 minutes to stitch depending on your machine because every machine is different but the stitching on it really is beautiful. After it does the satin it will actually go through and do a row of stitching around and then a slightly narrower satin just to make sure that that satin doesn't um, 
come apart at any time as well if you've ever had something that was heavily satin stitched um, it can tend to come apart and we don't want that so watching things satin stitch can get really really boring what I'm going to do is now wave my magic wand again and finish off this stitching okay so our stitching is now complete and you can see I've got my carrier the last thing that I need to do is put on the snap tabs to allow you to hold the carrier upright without worrying about it flopping open so I hold the handles together and I like to pierce about halfway through the handle and about halfway between the distance between the handle and the edge and I pierce through all layers so that I know it is going to match up correctly then I take my first snap and using my cam snap tool pierce it down and the trick here is just to remember to always put a male and a female on each side and by that that is my male I'm just gonna you can see how that one sticks up do the same thing on the other side and so this is our female and just to be extra compulsive if I've got the female on this side I'm going to make sure I've got another female there just because I feel like it looks just a little more professional place that underneath and last one okay so I can now take my cup of coffee now this actually has liquid in it it is full because what I want to do is show you that this holder can carry a full-size drink and what you now have is your coffee cup holder ah, what you now have is your coffee cup holder with my drink inside ready to be carried alternatively if you often get drinks for other people use the double size but these projects are brilliant to stitch to sell or as gifts for a coffee lover in your family I hope you've enjoyed this project and I look forward to seeing you next time on Julie Hall Designs. Until then, have a stitching day. Bye.